Hello everyone and welcome to this first video illustrating the concepts of the Mechatronics course. Today we are going to take a look at filtering the channels of an encoder. The system under scrutiny is illustrated here and consists of four DC motors controlled by four amplifiers from the company Basic Micro. We also have an Arduino which is bypassed here will use the computer directly to control the amplifiers and the motors. We also have screw terminals that allow us to visualize the signals that go to the motors and also retrieve information from the optical encoders. In the bottom left corner, you have a screenshot of what's on the screen of the computer. The basic micro software allowing me to check the motor angle through M1 encoder information and also to increase or decrease the rotation speed. We also have a screenshot of the oscilloscope that is reading one of the encoder channel and you can see here a first thing. Although I feed my encoder with 5 volts regulated, I get a signal that is quite noisy. You can also see the actual motor we will use during our tests in the upper left corner. We're going to use the software to increase the voltage we send to the motor so that it starts to turn. You see the changing encoder signal, which in theory is a square one, but in practice doesn't look like that at all. If we reset the encoder value and rotate the motor in one direction, here clockwise, by one revolution, we should measure 6533 pulses. In practice, we don't have that at all. When we come back to the starting position, we don't have zero either, and that's a problem. This problem comes from the noise with all these pulses. These very fast rises and falls of the encoder signal, which completely disturb the measurement. So what can we do to solve this situation? Well, there are several possible solutions, but probably one of the simplest is to insert a capacitor between the ground and the encoder channel. It will create a simple low-pass filter and here I will try first with a 1.2 nanofarad capacitor. You immediately see the result. The noise is dramatically reduced. You can tell the difference when you take the capacitor off. The whole question then is finding the right value of the capacitor. I'm going to try with a 4.7 nanofarad capacitor now, and it's just as well, but we can see a small rounding at the rising edge of the signal. If we continue to increase the value of the capacitor, here I'm going to try with a 100 nanofarad, we're going to see that this rounding, this delay, will progressively increase. And in this situation, the capacitor is probably too big because if we increase the speed of the motor, we may miss the high value of the signal. Here I try with a 360 nanofarad capacitor. If you look at the M1 encoder value on the computer screen, you can see that the software, from the software perspective, the motor is not currently moving at all. While in practice, it clearly is. The encoder signal is completely attenuated by the capacitor. Obviously, this is not what you want. So, to select the right capacitor value, we can increase the motor speed to the maximum, as shown here, and we will look at the encoder signal and try to find value that seem correct. Here, 4.7 nanofarad. It's pretty good. There's a little bit of noise left, but you have to think that some of this noise is coming from the wire between the oscilloscope probe and the line. So it's not necessarily something the amplifier sees. Here I try with 10 nanofarad, a noticeable rounding at the beginning, but not a major one. We can try again with one last value, here 47 nanofarad. And with the later, it's starting to get uncomfortable. So it seems that the right value in this particular case was around 10 nanofarad. 10 nanofarad gives me a small rounding, a small delay at the rise of the signal, but it stays quite negligible. 
Once we have selected this value, we can try again rotating one revolution and back to see if this time we have a normal encoder value. I still have my 10 nanofarad capacitor. I move one turn and I have a value very close to 6533. And if I come back to about the same position, it gives me almost zero. So now it's working. I'm finished. I have a system that I can accurately control in position. Thank you all for listening and see you soon.